Hello, and welcome to the abandoned naval base. Whoa. Good morning. We're on the site of a former naval base today. opened in 1865 and it closed in 1977. This is a civil trespass who's joining us today on this explore. Check this place out. There's Andy setting his drone up so while he's doing that we'll just go for a quick walk round and then uh, we'll see so you can see we're in, in the swimming pool it's deeper than a normal pool because obviously with it being a naval base uh, they did quite a lot of training in here yeah the ladders are still still there but the rungs are sadly broken there we go. yeah it's, you can see the depth of the pool I'm, I'm five foot four uh, and I'm stood up now and I'm only just above the my head's only just above the side you wouldn't get that in a normal Olympic pool. So here we are in the pool itself. It does look slippy, although it isn't. It's it's the shiny tiles that give it that illusion. So here we are at the deep end. And uh, normally in an Olympic pool, I'll be able to touch the top, but 11 foot six. So my five foot four and a half is dwarfed in here. There's the there's the drone. Let's see if we can... The size of this place, it's a really, really big building. Brilliant. So... So it drops off fairly steep into the deep end there. Yeah. Big, big building. I'm just on the GoPro, Dave's got the big camera. I've been flying the drone. So we're in the swimming pool of a former naval base. This naval base closed in 1977. It's where the Royal Navy did their Royal Navy swimming test. Also known as the naval swimming test, applicants need to jump in the deep end, wearing overalls, tread water for two minutes, then swim two complete lengths of the pool in a further four minutes, then get out of the deep end unaided. They then need to climb up a dive board that's three metres high and jump off that into the deep end, then get back out unaided. That would then be a complete pass for the naval swimming test. Fit to, uh, to pass it, a lot fail, a lot fail it. Good swimmers fail it. And that will have happened in here. Lots and lots of shouting would have happened in here. And then your commander, your PT commander would have been in that observation room here. And all your trainees would have been along these benches on the outside. Round the outside, round the outside. He's exploring Dave, look. That is proper weight, isn't it? For like pulling flags or something. Yeah. It's paused. Yeah. I'll have a GoPro. Hello, GoPro. It's Exploding Dave. Um, and today I'm exploring. Uh, nice. 
Okay. Poolside. Rather than walk just down this tree, a little passage at the back here will go along. But with the seats, see, it's fairly narrow. Not much room. Once somebody sat down here, you can, no chance of people getting past this, sir. You'd be crammed in. And they extend all the way around, all the way around the uh, top deck of the pool there. There's, there's an Andy doing his rounds up there. Look, you see his light. Big pool. As I was saying, the um, depth of this pool, because it was a military training pool, it's deeper than normal. The, I don't know if you can make it out there, the depth of the pool at the shallow end is three foot six. Normal Olympic pool is only three foot. And the deep end is 11 foot six. So I don't know what that is in metric, uh, but it's definitely bigger than your two metre depth in your normal Olympic pool. Um, of course, yeah, they needed that depth to do do proper training. Uh, they would have them retrieving objects from the bottom of the pool and uh, get the life rafts out and do escape drills and things in this pool. We used to do on the RAF stations, so I would think the Navy it would be more prevalent. So this was the like um, this would have been where the commander uh, or the divisional. Well, it's called divisional officer. This is where the divisional officer would have stood. He would have been in this, in this little area here with his croissants and whatever else he had. A substantial, substantial place indeed. Right, so this is a shower area. Toilets, showers. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, this is one of them foot bath things. They used to put these in swimming pools to, uh, I think it was to spread verrucas, because they certainly didn't sw stop it, they like made it worse. Because the verruca virus would just live in this cold bath here, and you all had to stand in it, so you all got verrucas. Oh, that's like a workshop area. That's a... Uh, Professional toilet unblocker. I used to call them uh, hip shunters. That's what that is. Well, he's not, not looking so well, is he? I know it's Saturday, yeah. but can you get your tool bag out and just get these going? I'll give them a quick service. Yeah, they just need a quick. I was just saying these. Heat exchangers here. Yep. Uh, on the other side of this wall is the calorifier for the hot water. Mm -hmm. um, so the heating water from the boilers would circulate around one side of the heat exchanger, mm. and the domestic hot water for the showers would circulate through the other side. Mm, that's clever. So the boilers would warm up the water yeah. without mixing, because obviously you don't want heating water mixing with your shower water be up. Oh, smelly, don't want that. No, you don't want to be getting washed in the swimming pool water yeah. or the boiler feed water that's yeah. got like all the treatment in it and stuff. These are big boilers. Is that like a massive vacuum cleaner from that is, yeah, that the is days of the Daleks? I know, vacuum cleaner. Edward or Harold? I don't know. That's a Harold vacuum cleaner. Yeah. The second guy is here. I've seen him. These are the sort of switches Colin Fairs uses on his inventions. That looks like a chilled water tank. Yeah, that's, that's accumulator for pool water. Ah, right, yeah. They do have big accumulators, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, so they can... Like, you know, when you say if the pool's empty and then hundred sailors all jump in at the same time, the water level goes up, it goes in that accumulator. It doesn't like go down the drain, they keep it and then they can pump it back in, heat it up and pump it back in. So let's continue this explore. Let's keep looking around, see what we can find. These are the old curtains that, like they used to have in Naval Messes when I, when I was still in. I still use them in the 90s. 
They stank as well because they had like anti moth stuff on them. They used to stink. They were, like minging. They used to smell like fish. They had all your next swimmers in here. And they would have been sat in divisions. Divisions of uh, the men were sort of broken up into groups, and those groups were called divisions. And then you would have like done competitions to make that division the best one out of all the other ones and stuff. That's what they used to do. Oh, check the floor out. Cool mosaic. That is proper mosaic as well, not like multi multi tile stuff you just grow in now. That's proper pieces that have all been put in. No swimming today. So earlier on when I said about that accumulator, you know, when everybody jumped in the pool and the level of the water rose because of, you know, extra volume in the pool, it will have gone into this gully here and then soaked away, drained away down this drain here. Got down that hole and it would have ended up in the accumulator. See, some of this don't even look that old. So we'll look down at the deep end. Right, we're making our way back out now. We're going to see what the buildings are still here after all these years. Let's go. Right, we're in an old, uh, what looks like accommodation building. See, someone's gone to the trouble of smashing every sink. I think it's the metal thieves. When they come and um, they come and steal the taps because they're worth about two p. So they steal all the taps, but to get them off, they smash the sinks. Bang! Smash them. <laughs> what like danger the hula's out? This one's a bit different. It's got a smashed up wardrobe in it. Like a retro shaver switch. That's quite cool. It's like 110 for Americans and 230 for British. That's quite cool. That. Room 101. You put your main room 101 now? Yeah, exactly. That is a big tray that's fallen down. That opened a lot easier than I thought it would. I thought it'd be like loads of resistance and just went. Isn't it? Yeah, well, there wouldn't have been a box in the corner there. Yeah, smashed, so, of course. Look, it says scaffolding. So, I don't know, it might have been the NCO's day room. Do not use wet paint on pipes. Hmm. I think it's dried now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, look, it's various curl hooks. See, all these places I come to, right, we're always quiet and cut there. People have been off there, they've been kicking, kicking holes in walls, so smashing sinks and that. Can't be quite Can't be. Unless it's security that's doing it. Ooh, maybe. Maybe I'll look. Watch where you're looking when yeah. you go up there. Yeah. So that's the swimming pool complex there. We're going to get in there. Right, you can see the uh, security man. Security. Security. Yeah. Security is just over there. See the main mast. Yeah. I'm close to get that main mast in. Very. It'd be nice to climb up to the top. Well, it used to. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I think we'll save that one last in case we get rumbled. We'll cut scene to the sailors that actually did climb to the top. And during training, the sailors used to man the mast, which would basically climb up it. They used to climb right up to the top, and there was a guy who climbed at the very top and he was called the Button Boy and he used to get a captain's award for doing it. I'll try and cut scene to some imagery of that. Scary stuff in the days before health and safety because there was no safety net so if you fell off that was it and the answer to that was don't fall off. It seemed to work. I don't think they had many deaths. How many? How many of my viewers used to work on CVS aircraft carriers? Probably not many. But they used to call this wobbly revs. 118, 118 on both shafts used to 
make the back of the ship quite wobble because of the, but it was an ideal speed for launching aircraft. So they used to do 118 quite a lot. And um, yeah, the back of the ship used to vibrate because of the cavitation and the water vortex off both props sort of hitting each other right. It was just the right pressure to make the back end of the ship go pop, 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 pop. It used to go along and you used to be eating your dinner like rah, 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 rah. Yeah, good times. Carry a vertical strike. HMS, Invincible, Illustrious and Arcoil. All now scrapped. Oh wow, there's a door up in the loft. Oh wow. So the band. I'm at the Morris Marina, Cortina, a Renault, an Ital, they were out of them. An Astra, Cavalier. You'd want the Capri, wouldn't you? You'd really want the Capri out of all of them. That's pretty cool. Some decent cars there, apart from the Ital and the Marina. Yeah. Any security out there, anyone? No, can't see Going over there in a bit. That is big, isn't it? Yeah, we're going in there in a bit. It's all offices and that, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit of a weird layout. It is a strange layout. Ceiling's a bit cream crackered. Yeah, that's our next target. That's next. Yeah. Yeah, along that tree line, yeah, and then get all that done. Let's just see how much she's left on this SD card. Do you stand there, Dave? Oh, check out the orange door. Let's go this way. <laughs> Is this an old shot? Oh. It's over there, around. Shotgun cartridge. Landfill, Put stuff on top of it. Oh, let's get down there and see if we can see it on there. Into that bit. Yeah. Oh, look at the view. We've got a big port over there. Just like a constant background noise, which is good because it's providing us with a good blend of cover noise. So, if we're like standing on twigs or anything, it's covering that noise up with just ships and pallets being dropped. You know, the big concern has been dumped onto ships like every now and then, it's like boom, there's background, so it's giving us great cover. District Control 41 BLZ or BL7. That is the main mast. We're going in this bunker now. So 
Oak is all about. Oh, wow. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you. He's trespassing now. And exploring death. Hi. Is that a sliding door? Yeah. Yes. It's not very really slidey and there's a big yeah. spider on the back of it. Yeah, these were magazines, I think. And this will be for passing through the heavy charges. Dave, pull your hand back, pull your hand back, pull your hand back. Get your hand off there. There's a false widow on the back of the door. A false widow? A false widow on the back of the door. Oh, now, I shit you not. Well, yeah. Hello. That was coming to bite you. Yeah. Bite, 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 bite. Bitey, 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 bitey. Mm. Bitey, 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 spider. That's a moths as well. Can't be that good, get on top then. The heaters are intrinsically safe. Oh, cool. Because this was a, a powder room. Yeah, this is all done in pyro. Yeah. Cool. There's another false widow there. Oh! Please. False widow and false widow eggs. There's false widows there. You can see the false widow are growing inside the egg sack there. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You see it growing inside. There's a false widow. Arr, bitey, bitey. There's another one. Bitey, bitey, bitey. It would uh, freak me out though if there was a false widow, like jumped on me or something. Because they do bite and they do bite hard. There's some more false widows here. False widows and false widow eggs. There. I'll have to get a photo of them. Right, so we're just in the, uh, we're in the magazine. And there's a weapon hoist here. I don't want to run up that runner. Up there. Oh, he's like. Big wood. These big wooden doors. This looks like it used to be a magazine of some sort. Like, uh, Weapons magazine. There's a big vent up there. Intrinsically safe is where it's like it's got an extra containment around anything electrical, so if there's any spark, it's contained, so it doesn't cause any spark outside, which could cause an explosion. That's called intrinsically saved electrical installation. It's very expensive and only used where it's needed. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have had naked flames in here, in the Napoleonic days, so to light it, there would have been a frame here with a piece of glass, and this side would have been sealed. You would have put a lantern in there from the other side to light this area, and this hole in the ceiling that allowed the heat from the lantern to escape and prevent it. No way. So that isn't from idiots causing fires, that's from, that's from Napoleonic actual days. Napoleonic lighting. No, that's cool. So you can imagine how the it would have been here with just two, two lamps in there, casting the light into this. That's why they painted white inside, to reflect Reflect any light you had. Any light that they have, yeah. Even ROC posts are white inside, yeah. aren't they? For the same principle. Yeah. Just a bit paranoid, can you make sure there isn't a false widow on my back? No. Good, good news. Yeah. This is another one, Bob. It's got a number there, yeah, number six. Yeah, number six, there was a number two so, in the other one. You can see where, where the m motor was. Yeah. yeah, it's all been like uh, rolled out. I think this would have been one where they place the lamp in. There's a, an air grate here. Oh, to let the air in. The, to let the air in and of course. draw upwards. Yeah, so it added like a natural draft natural ventilation. Air, yeah. So you put the lamp in there and then close the door, and then that would be it. You, you know, you'd be 
sort of safe. So this would have been used up to and including the Second World War? Yeah. Probably decommissioned in the 1950s? Yeah, I think so. Because in the 1950s, they had a big sort of cutback, of, they had a big scale back of all yeah. armed forces everywhere. And gun positions like this were decommissioned because we had the, like the Korean War on at the time. Vietnam was sort of heating up. Communism was spreading across Cambodia, the Soviet bloc. It was all about Germany and Russia and all that. They weren't bothered about gun positions in the UK because there weren't really any naval battles anymore. Battleships in the Second World War had proven that they were sort of obsolete. It was aircraft carriers, airborne attacks, things like that, submarines. And to missiles. Advent of missiles, so gun batteries like this became obsolete, so they closed. Yeah. Yeah, I've got another weapons hoist here. This one's more intact, it hasn't got like racking on it. But if I try and point you up there, you'll see up the weapons hoist. The actual trolley state that's still at the top. We'll try and see that from outside if we can. Yeah. Have you seen the Kotuks? Yeah, what's that about? Why are they so big? Well, because I'm guessing that they would have come down here with all the webbing on. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. And then when they're humping and dumping ammunition about, they would mm, take the webbing, the webbing off, off, take the big coat off, yeah. because it would get hot in here when they're humping and dumping heavy stuff. Yeah, no, there's no air. So, no air. So they would be just working in the... They used to wear, like, a, a long-sleeve under vest, didn't they? Yeah. So I think that's what they would be doing, hang all the kit up there. Cool. This one's number, if you can make that out, that's number five. That was light position number five. What number's that one? It's all sort of worn away, sadly. Yeah, worn away. Worn away. It's got like 19, 1950s electrics. The damn's got to it, all unfortunately. That still operates. So we're going to leave the big scary spiders to it. Definitely. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's like Spurn Point. Yeah. Where they used to hoist stuff in. That's it, yeah. Yeah, like hoist the ammunition in and store it and then use it for bang bang bang. Bang bang bang. How to get some shots of them gun positions or anything, I'll just keep an eye out. Yeah, I might film this one, because that's big, innit? It is. That would have been a big gun on there. A big gun. A big gun. Very big gun indeed. On here. It's all broken up now. So there would have been a great big gun up here. But now it's uh, been removed, sadly. These are little ready-use shell rooms, like little culverts for shells. They were just fired out of here. Straight over there, it's the bay. Right, we're going to go inside. We're going to go inside another bunker now and see what's in there. Dave's just keeping stag. Here, check this out. A lot of shotgun shells. So let's have a look in here then. ALW Exploration on tour. This yeah. is one of our very first UK road trips. There's a lot of shotgun shells in there. Off. This to me is a backstop. Backstop? Yeah. Look, this, this has been a target range. Oh. That rubber ah. has been to allow the bullets to go through, hit the backstop, and drop to the floor. So, we've either been uh, using shotguns. There's one of the targets, look. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, wow. Call him, call him flat target. That's not a target. Shops a bit, yeah. It's been... So they would, they would have had fall in place. I'm wondering if they use this as close quarter battle training. Yeah. You know, you could come in as though you were clearing a bunker and there'd be targets pop up at you and you'd take them out. Just trying to see if there's any the shot on the floor because if it was military using it, there would be big ball yeah. shot. Not just your little number size six clay pigeon. But there's nothing I mean, now, is there? We're obviously shot because there's the one. But, uh, yeah, there's some. You can see it, the little balls on the floor. Can you pick them up? Oh, uh, yeah. It's just the little stuff. Yeah, them is not what I'd use. That's his military use. No. There's one. Oh, tiny, tiny little bits. Yeah, no. And they just fragment. Oh, there's one, look. Can you see that? That's what hits you. That's the shot of a shotgun shell. Let's have a look further up here. Yep. This, folks. <laughs> ah, it goes all the way through. That's interesting. Some more to look at over there. Trick point. That is an ordnance survey. Trick point. I found another one. I'm quite good at finding these. Oh, there's a big water tower. What? They're in the lots. They're in the lots, see, anyway. There's stuff down there, but I don't know who can get down there. Looks like it's a natural light on the ground floor. Yeah. There's actually an upstairs to this as well. I'm going to go ahead. This has been the bit for the parade ground. Yeah. That's where they stood. That's where the base commander stood. And this would have been the parade ground. That's what this is. Been. That's been a dance floor. So this has been like a nightclub. That's been a dance floor area. It's all it done out like a nightclub. So this has been a lounge. The HQ building. Parade Square, that's the HQ building. See that there? Yeah. Pillars. That's where the base commander would have stood and watched parades passing out yeah. from there. Yeah. It's Oh yeah. It's quite really close to Sakyan. Yeah. There's the base main gate right there. Could I please have a pint of Carlin and double rum and coke for my mate Dave? Yeah, that's right. Two pints of lag and a packet crisp, please. Yeah. That's me, isn't it? Hey, hey, yeah. That's me, I think. Apparently, apparently that's me. Carlin. Stay there, mate. I'll get a picture. Then last there, look. Yeah. That's good, that in it. That's nice. All them radiators all different colours from the 70s. All the silver ones, blue ones, yellow ones. All the floor light, all the greenery that's going on the floor. That looks where they sort of had like a stage for announcing things.
That's a proper. Whoa. So that's a Rampoy chair. That's who we used to make them for the forces, March 1970. And that, see that number there? That's the NATO stock number. I've got a photo of that. Tested 769. Machinery. All the decay area is absolutely trash. Roof access prohibited. Might have to just get a sign on that picture of that sign though. Turns out that sign's wrong. Let's put a big water tank rim. Wow. That is cool, that isn't it? What a view. I won't fancy walking on that roof though, because it was like just like tin. It is so thin. Rotten. It? Rotten Whoa. tin. See it's splitting there. Oh yeah. SEJCC Project Fund. If any of you out there know what the SEJCC Project Fund is, leave a comment below. The ducks have been on like hinges. Yeah. Do you like throw coins at them or something? Yeah. Or oh, maybe a pop gun with corks. Yeah. But somebody's had to go with your neck, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a racket for everyone. Yeah. For the people that don't know, this is what this is called a uh, LP single 45. This is what was like pre CD player, pre MP3, yeah, pre iPod, all that. That's a 45 single. Looks like it was the old galley. Yeah, they've had a suspended ceiling in here that's all gone now. And there's the other end of the uh, vert floors I was showing you earlier. With someone's shoe. It's Clark's cool as well, it's a good shoe that. See that, 1951. where they did the pots basically. They just did all the washing up and that. Get close to the road. Oh, 
Ah, da haben wir auch prominent Stoff in hier. What like a shop selling stuff. Yeah, full boxes of towels. No towels for sale still. Brand new towels. Made in England. Boxes and boxes of them. So if you need some towels, you need to come here. Don't know what days the shops are open though. The old refrigerator cold stores there. All of the towels. So I had loads of stock left when they closed this place. Bath panel. What a corner bath there. I've always wanted a corner bath. PT server. Oh, the stock room. Oh, all these doors. Internal doors. This looks like it's been some sort of shop at some point. They've been sort of selling stuff off. And, uh, obviously, just got bored and stopped doing it. Making our way back out now. Are these boots here. Okay. Whose boots are these shoes? Proper old boots, is then. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. It's cool room there. I don't want to pass through it. What's that? Whoa. Some cool electrical stuff in here. Maybe big switch gear, switch disconnectors. Electrical stores. Air conditioning plant. Spares cupboard. Stairs. Yeah, there's loads of spares in here. Cars brand new brick on there. Dolman load line, MCB. I won't switch it because it'd be really loud, they got like clonk. These brand new MEM isolators. Brand new inbox. Just left to the care. The contacts are in there. 15 mil compression too. Empty. Must have used all that. Yeah. Boxes of fuses and that. Yeah. That shelf needs a little yeah. paint or that one. Yeah. So this was a this was a galley. Galley's where they make food. Yeah. See the Vulk radio that kept it up to date, but it's still very young because they're quite a modern distribution board. So it closed in 77, so they've kept it top end until then. I'll have to get a picture of that, mate. Yeah. So this would have been like the corporal's dining room or something. Or sergeant, um, corporal's. It would have been. Petty officers, or have you seen that? Have you seen that? Look at this. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is where they put all the hats. There would have been a lot all along there. There would have been racks for all the hats. Because, uh, the mess fine was taking your hat in the mess, you weren't allowed to do it. Old electronic typewriter. Oh, that's cool. Oh, God, yeah. I was pretty decayed that. Let's get, um, have a beer type arrangement. Price list. Pills, 8p, eight, eight so 
Some was one pound fifty. Carling was a pound. Pound a pint and here it is. Pound a pint. Yeah, one pound a pint. Yeah. So I think what they used to do was do some training and then come and have lots of beer. Which is quite cool. That's why I want you. Pull the tables out of order. Oh, the metal thieves have been. Like a lounge. It's easy to come in here and have a pint, you know. Looks quite nice. Thank you very much for joining us on this epic adventure of the naval base that's been abandoned. It's Dave. And uh, I'm by the way, I am stood up. <laughs> I'll crouch down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the outro. Outro. Thank you very much for watching this epic naval base explore. I'm Andy. And I'm Dave. Check out our Instagrams, Facebooks, all that jazz. No, fucking Ian says that to me. <laughs> What's to do that? Yes, folks, Golden Jim. <laughs> 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 Is that, is, it, is that a proper outtake? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, thank you for joining us on this abandoned Neville Base Explorer. Please, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Click the notification bell. Check out Dave on Instagram, ALW Exploring Dave. And if you want a hoodie, these are 30 quid on the uh, website. Dave's not included there, it's just a hoodie. Well, I don't know, for 30 quid I'll pretty much do anything. If I just yeah. read this, 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 the link. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the £30 on the website, so check those out on alwexploration.co.uk. Bye bye for now. Bye. Looking over my shoulder, looking back at your door, in my head it goes over.